All right, on Shalom, Shalom. Kahalayim la, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakaha Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of great millstone who rule and teach well. Must peace, love, and salutation to the brothers doing work in truth and sincerity of heart. Shalom. This is the brother Batat again through the spirit with another lesson. Lord willing, it's edifying. <clears throat> As you can see, um, I was on, I seen a video that a brother posted yesterday um, off a of TikTok of Edomite going into, um, different historical events that happened in the past like Black like Wall Street and um, he mentioned the Wilmington Massacre of 1898 which that you know I was a little curious so I, I did some research on it and what I found out is I have an article here that's going to give a little brief information concerning what happened in that on that day in that year um, so to put it in simple terms Jake's Jake, so Israelites, was in certain positions of power, and e Esau, you know, put a coup together to overthrow it. So, this is exactly what, you know, the head of IUIC says is going to happen in the future when Israel is ruling, and that is not going to happen. So, let's get into it. Let's read the article a little bit, get some good information out of here, and, um, Low wilderness edifying. It says in eight in the late 1890s, Wilmington, North Carolina, a port city between the Atlantic barriers and islands, barrier islands, I'm sorry, and it says and the banks of the Cape Fear River became an island of hope for new for a new America. Residents of the city's thriving black community made themselves a political force, exercising the rights of citizenship guaranteed to the, guaranteed to them after the Civil War by the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. Across the South, such activity had triggered deadly white violence against black voters, organized and office holders in the decades since the war. But in Wilmington, a city of 20,000, I'm sorry, yeah, 20,000, the votes of 8,000 black men helped a rare biracial fusion alliance elect candidates of both races. Three of the 10 aldermen were black. The city had both black health inspectors, postmasters, magistrates, and policemen, albeit under orders not to arrest anyone white. <laughs> so you can arrest your own people, but not them. The county coroner, jailer, and treasurer were black, or they was all Israelites, Jakes, as was the res register of deeds. Black business people pooled their money in three black owned banks families families a generation removed from from enslavement owned these homes and read a black local black newspaper as modern day wilmington Wilming, wilmington tim pinnock a genealogist put things put it i'm sorry things function the way they were meant to function as a result of emancipation and as you can see this is where the coup came in at planning a coup attention white men there will be a meeting of the white men of Wilmington this morning at 11 o'clock at the city at the courthouse a full attendance is desired as business in the um, furtherance of white supremacy will be transacted see as you can see this was a poster all right continue on it says but if Wilmington looked but if Wilmington looked to some Americans like a model for the south powerful white leaders including the president of Wilmington Cotton Mills Company the editor of the of the Ray Rayleigh News and Observer and the chairman of the state Democratic Party could not abide it they set they set not they set out to topple what the newspaper edited editor labeled Negro rule so as you can see where this is going 125 years ago on November 10th, 19, 1898, a shocking coup d'etat was executed. The plotters had set the stage by creating their, what they called the white supremacy campaign. They printed falsehoods and about black men preying on white women and stockpiling guns. They targeted the fusion, or, the fusion office holders and the black newspaper summoned summit militias and white vigilantes known as red shirts and terrorized black voters at the polls if you if, if you see the negro out voting tomorrow tell him stop one of the leaders former 
Confederate Colonel Alfred Moore Waddle told a gun waving audience, uh, white, I'm sorry, gun waving white audience on the evening of Wilmington's 1898 election. If he doesn't shoot, if he doesn't shoot him down, shoot him down in his tracks, Mr. Waddle vowed to choke the current of the Cape Fear River with black bodies if he had to. <laughs> on November 10th, red shirts, militiamen, and white mobs surged through Wilmington streets and massacred 60 or more black men. They gave their lives to vote in his Nate Brown, a retired New York City transit manager whose great great grandfather Joshua Hasley tried to flee uh, tried to flee the militiamen. As you can see, they burnt this place down. It says the remains of the office of the black owned newspaper, the daily record after it was burned in Wilmington Coup and Massacre, November tenth, eighteen ninety eight. The red shirts torched the black pe the black newspaper's office, posed for pictures in front of its smoking ruins, installed Mr. Waddle as mayor and set hundreds of black residents fleeing and sent hundreds of black residents fleeing into the woods. Some ran towards the river, others east to the black cemetery. Uh, uh, Tholia Howell was 12 when her family and others took refuge in Pine Forest, a cemetery that dated back to the period before emancipation. It was said that family sheltered next to the graves of their loved ones. So, as you can see, um, this is exactly what Nate says is going to happen in the kingdom of heaven once the nation of Israel takes over. So, these Edomites, they was mad. They didn't want Jake to be over them. They didn't want Jake to be in positions of power. So, they overthrew him and killed him. This was like an insurrection. Let's go to the word insurrection. Insurrection. It says a uprising against civil authority. A rising up. So that's what it was to rise up. It was an insert. It was a, um, a revolt against the powers that be, which there was Israelites in those positions. One who rises in a revolt, an insurgent against a government or its laws. So they they basically um, took matters into their own hands and um, terrorized the Israelites that was there in the, in in positions of power, as you can see, and they overthrew it. You know, so this is this is something that um, not it's not gonna happen in our kingdom. You know, don't even think about it because hey, we gonna smash our enemies, literally. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's get some real quick. Micah chapter four, verse thirteen. Uh, Uh, Michael 4 and 13 it says Arise and thresh O daughter of Zion For I will make thy horn iron And I will make thy hooves brass And thou shalt beat in, many pe beat in pieces Many people I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord And their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth So arise and thresh The word thresh Means to beat So Let's get some real quick Thresh the word thresh just says to be, to beat, to um, sift grain by trampling or beating, to thresh to beat. So that's exactly what's going to happen. Our enemies are going to be beaten into subjection and there is not going to be a revolt. Even if there was, that, that revolt would be squashed quickly, immediately, you know? So this just goes... This is a real example on how when Israelites was ruling in positions of power, Edomites, they hated that and they overthrew it. And you think when we get in our kingdom that our enemies are going to actually over uprise and overthrow the righteous government or Yahweh Shai? You got to be out of your fucking mind. Michael 4 and 13 in the BBE says, up and let the grain be crushed, O daughter of Zion, for I would make, well, that's not a good. Hmm. Let's see what the NLT says. Okay, here's NLT says, rise up and crush the nations. O Jerusalem, says Yahweh, for I will give you iron horns and brass hooves so you can trample many nations 
to pieces. You will present their stolen riches to Yahweh, their wealth to the God, to Yahweh, the Lord of the whole earth, because we are going to beat our enemies. We are going to have rulership over our enemies. We are going to have our enemies under subjection. Psalms chapter 2, verse 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou sh shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So we're going to have rulership over our enemies, and we're going to be able to do whatever we want to do them, do with them. Let's read the BBE. It's Psalms 2 and um, 8 BBE. Make your request to me and I will give you the nations for your heritage and the furthest limits of the earth will be under your hand, under our control. Verse 9, it says, they will be ruled by you with a, with a rod of iron. They will be broken like a potter's vessel. So, you know, ruling with a rod of iron, ruling with an iron fist. Let's go up. Let's go with that. Let's, let's go see. Rule with a rod of iron. Oh, let's go. Let's type in rod. Iron fist basically means the same thing. Rule with an iron fist. The expression, the expression ruling with an iron fist is a valid metaphor that conveys the idea of governing or controlling with strict, often brutal dominance. That word dominance makes me think about the word dominion, which Israel is going to have in the earth. Domination. We're going to dominate our enemies. It says rule, control by means of superior ability. Because we are ultimately going to be superior. We are superior. The scripture says what? We are, we are gods. And we're going to be put back into that position. And if you're thinking that Esau and the other nations are going to uprise and revolt and overthrow the government of Yahweh Shai, you are smoking. Psalms 82 and 6 I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of, of, of the Most High, which is we the sons of the Most High, which is what it means Yahshua Allah. He's a prince of the power. But ye shall die like men and shall fall like one of the princes. So we are gods. I mean, we're going to be on a whole nother level when we're ruling. And we're going to have domination, rule over our enemies. And it starts with Yahweh Shai. So that is what that is what we're looking forward to, the establishment of our kingdom. Yahweh Shai's kingdom. It says, control, rule by means of superior ability, because we are gods and we are superior. The scriptures tell us that clearly. Influences, resource, resources, or position, the exercise of power and ruling. Domination, rule, power. So we're going to be lords in the earth. Dominion. Lordship, sovereign or supreme authority from old French dominion, dom dominion, rule, power. It says in law, the power of control, right of uncontrolled possession or user use and disposal. So we're going to have the power of control in the earth. That's what Israel, the Israelites are going to have once again. There were times when uh, in history, in the scriptures, where well, Israel had rule. And one of those times is when King David was ruling and he was subduing all of his enemies. Second Samuel chapter two, verse eight. I go into this a lot because all this whole chapter talks about the triumphs of King David. You know, Sec, uh, second Samuel eight and one. And after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistines and subdued them. And David took men the gamma out of the hand of the Philistines and David smote Moab and measured them with a line cast them down to the ground even with two lines measured he to put to death and with one full line to keep alive and so the Moabites became David's servants I believe his scripture says uh, he put garrisons in Edom let me see hold on let me see garrisons a garrison is like a military outpost Oh, it was actually verse 14. Jumping down, 2 Samuel 8, 
and um jumping on to verse 12 it says of syria and of moab and of the children of ammon and of the philistines and of amalek and of the spoil of hadi hadi inzer son of rahab rehab king of zabah the day and david gave got him a name when he returned from smiting of the syrians in the valley of salt being eighteen thousand men and he put garrisons in edom throughout all edom put he garrisons and all that and all they of edom became david's servants and yahweh preserved david whithersoever he went and david ruled over all israel and david executed judgment and justice unto all the people so this is going to happen again this is going to happen again to all of the enemies of israel and there will never be a revolt while we are in power there will never be a, a uprising and our enemies take over again that rebellion will be met with cruelty luke chapter 19 verse 27 if you don't want your house shot ruling over you that you you're going to get dealt with luke 19 and 27 but those my enemies which were not that i should reign over them bring hither and slay them before me so if you don't want your house to rule over you you're going to be dealt with um and this goes back to that perpetual hatred that esau has for our people and he don't want us to rule over him but guess what you don't have no choice israelites are the next rulers and there's nothing you can do about it amos 1 and 11 thus said yahweh for three transgressions of edom and for four i will not turn away the punishment thereof because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever but i will set a fire upon teman which shall devour all the places of basra so after america's destroyed uh, the stronghold of edom is destroyed you're going to be put in slavery every last one of y'all and we're going to rule over you and there's nothing you can do about it you can you don't like you don't got to like it hey it's inevitable you know you're gonna you're gonna be our slaves we, we're gonna be your rulers we're gonna be your masters we're gonna be your slave masters your women are gonna be our concubines the tables are getting ready to turn and who was turning the tables the heavenly father yahweh that's why america's on its way down the lord is finna turn this turn this world upside down and put israel on top ecclesiastes 10 and 7 i've seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth which is Israelites, man. We the ones that are real rulers. We the ones that are supposed to be controlling and dominating in the earth through the spirit of power and power of Yahweh by Shemal Shah. We the ones that's gonna return back to that that glorious state and of power and influence and control in the earth. And all of our enemies are gonna be subdued under us. Second Edris eight and one. And then and then he and he answered me and saying, saying, The Most High made this world for few for many. But the world to come for few, which is for Israel. You know, the Lord is finna get ready to break that yoke off our neck, and we're gonna put that yoke of iron on our enemies, man. To bind their kings with chains and nobles with fetters of iron. What you think that means? Let's get that. Because there ain't gonna be no fucking revolts in our kingdom, man. That shit gonna get squashed. Psalms 119, I'm gonna get straight down to the point. Verse, I'm gonna start at verse 5. It says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon our beds. That's what's going to happen in the kingdom. We're going to be in a. We're going to be blessed. We're going to be. Um, and our enemies are going to be cursed by Yahweh by Shmuel Shah. So how is they going to overthrow us when the Lord is going to be directly dealing with us, man? The angels are going to be there at all times. You know, verse six. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. That's a literal, real two-edged sword. To execute vengeance upon the heathen And punishments upon the people Here's the point, verse 8 To bind their kings with chains And their nobles with fetters of iron So Fetters of iron So this is what You, you Edomites need, Are going to look forward to man Fetters of iron You know slavery to execute upon them the judgment written this honor have all his saints praise he Yahweh. so anything 
any rebellion is going to be squashed. So as you can see, it's a couple examples of when we had our enemies in under um, under control, they rebelled against us. There was a rebel. They they probably broke away. You know, as you can see, uh, Second Kings one and one, it says then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Ahab. So there was many different times it was going to be there was rebellions against us, but guess what? When we take over. Things are going to change, man. There ain't going to be no fucking rebellions. And even if they were any rebellions, you know, we're going to have pleasure in squashing them. But our enemies are going to be beaten into subjection. You're going to be, you're not going to be rebellious. But Esau probably going to be rebellious, but that makes it more interesting and more fun. So anything, any rebellions are going to be met with brutal force by the nation of Israel, man. You know? If there are going to be rebellions. <clears throat> but we're going to subdue our enemies completely, man. You know. They're going to be met with force. <laughs> so. This this incident that happened in Wilmington. Is um, it's not going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. Once Israel takes over. This is, there is not going to be a time when our enemies is going to overthrow our rule overthrow our power and um, rule for themselves again because that time is over with. We're going to be powerful. We're going to have spiritual powers. We're going to be strong. We're going to be gods. We're going to have new bodies. We are going to squash them like a bug. So I just wanted to do this quick lesson through the spirit. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. So, we are going to have power over our enemies. And it's going to start with Yahweh Shai. Sirach 10 and 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. In due time, he will set over, set over it one that is profitable. So, that one, that profitable one, is our Lord Yahweh Shai. So, get ready to um, to be under us, Esau. Y'all don't like it? Oh fucking well, man. Israel is gonna rule. It's our time, man. You know, so you gonna overthrow a kingdom of priests? I don't think so. Not if the Lord is with us, and the Lord is gonna be with us, man. That's what that, that's what makes that that um, uprising of Edom again so impossible the lord is not gonna sniff that out the lord ain't gonna see that of rebellion brewing and sniff it out and cancel it out come on man that gotta be the that's some bullshit you know so it was this was an example on of israel ruling to a certain degree over edomites and guess what they did they rebelled and killed them but there was going to come a time in the future where well, the nation of Israel is going to have dominion over the whole earth and the whole universe. And if you're thinking that these Edomites and heathens are going to uprise and overthrow that powerful government, that peaceful government, you clearly don't know the scriptures and what the scripture says. And you're clearly denying the power of Yahweh Shemar Shah. And you're clearly denying the power of the men that are calling on the true names of the, of the Lord because they're going to have power. They're going to have new bodies. We are going to have dominion over all of these heathens. So you, if you thinking that, you following after that doctrine or that bullshit, you clearly do not know the scriptures. So Israel is going to rule and there will be no re rebellion of Edomites that's going to cause us to go back into slavery again. That's impossible. The scriptures don't support that fact. So with that, Lord willing, this quick lesson through the spirit was edifying. You know, just giving a quick little history or report of this incident. And how it'll never happen once we rule. <laughs> so with that, I'm gonna say shalom, kahalim la, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, Shalom.